Hello. This video shows how to set a region of interest for the analysis of trabecular bone in a mouse distal femur. The same method can be used also for the proximal tibia and either for the mouse or rat bones. The principle is to use the growth plate as a reference, the same as in histology based bone histomorphometry. If I begin in the metaphyseal trabecular region and move towards the growth plate, for example just using the keyboard arrow to move down slice by slice, one begins to see at the periphery of the bone structures of primary spongiosa as we approach the growth plate. As we get closer these structures become larger and eventually form a kind of bridge across the uh, cross section. As we move further down, we see not only the primary spongiosa, but also the low density seam of cartilage, which is the growth plate chondrocyte seam. And what we look for is the first establishment of a bridge or connection of this low density cartilage across the uh, bone cross section. See, if I move slice by slice, there comes a point here where that bridge is continuously established. One or two slices away and the bridge is interrupted. So this criteria allows a reasonably accurate identification of a single reference slice at the growth plate. So we will take this slice number 70 as our reference level. I place the mouse on that level up here in the dataset window and click the right button of the mouse, not the left but the right, and this uh, list of operations becomes visible. And I select the top one, Selection Reference. Now what this does is allows me to automatically set uh, a vertical range of slices which we will analyze for trabecular bone. So beginning at slice 70, if I move up, I find that at that slice 120 is the beginning of the region of interest. So the 50 slices represents what we call the offset because we don't want to actually analyze the bone close to the growth plate because it contains this primary spongiosa. Instead, we wish to analyze the mature structures of secondary spongiosa such as these. That is why we need an offset between the reference level at the growth plate and the start of our trabecular volume of interest. Now, we choose the offset ourselves just by looking at the data set and finding how many slices we need to move to get safely into this region of mature secondary trabecular bone. In this case I've used 50 slices, but you can decide for yourself what is the appropriate number. If I right click again and go down to the selection item, then I can enter these two parameters, the offset and the height. Here I've entered the offset as 50 and the height is 200. This means that the trabecular bone region begins 50 slices above where I've determined our reference level, i.e. number 50. And then the trabecular region extends a further 200 slices up from there, from 120 through 220 up to 320, where it then stops. I could have gone further but this region probably includes the majority of the metaphyseal trabecular bone. So this establishes our vertical range of slices relative to the growth plate, the first step in the analysis. The second step involves moving on to the second stage of CT Analyzer, region of interest. When I move to this page we see a bright red background which can be changed to blue by clicking on the invert button here. Now I can slightly magnify it by shift and mouse wheel movement and I start drawing these shapes with the left mouse button running parallel to but a little way away from the endocortical boundary and avoiding these uh, vestiges of the growth plate which still exist at the corners. So I draw my level like this, then I move up say 20 or 30 slices and draw another shape, the program will interpolate between
between the shapes that I draw to produce the three-dimensional volume of interest of trabecular bone. With a little bit of practice, this uh, drawing process becomes quite fast and straightforward. It can be assisted by using alternative pointing devices, such as pen pads or digitizing tablets, or even special monitors where you can draw directly on the monitor. So I continue upwards in this manner until the whole trabecular region of interest is delineated. A couple more slices should probably do the trick. Of course this is a somewhat subjective procedure, one has to do with the best one can, and as such it should only be done by one analyst for any particular morphometric study. With the region of interest complete, I can hit the spacebar to animate through the slices and check, most importantly, that my ROI has not included any of the cortical bone. Excluding a little bit of trabecular bound bone around the outside is not so much of a problem. If we're happy with the ROI, we click the second button at the ROI page, Save ROI, and we give it a name such as TRAB for trabecular. That saves the position of the ROI. What is equally important is now to create an ROI dataset. We click the third ROI button and a Save Files dialog box opens. We can create a new folder, we'll call it TRAB, and we will give files a prefix accordingly and we will save a new dataset which is much smaller than the original dataset and it contains just the bone within the trabecular volume of interest. This smaller region of interest is much more convenient to perform analysis and model building on.